This is an instructional video on how to build an Arduino based line following robot. I'm using the QTR8RC sensor which senses reflectivity as opposed to color. This means that your track needs to be a flat darker color and the line a shiny bright color or the opposite a shiny light colored track with a flat black line. I've been using shiny duct tape on the carpet and it seems to be working fine. If you are new to electronics or Arduino, you'll need to have a little patience. Don't try to build the entire thing at once. I'll give you the steps that I think will make it the easiest. I'll include a link below where you can view the schematic, the parts list, and copy the code that I wrote. Here are the components. I'm using the Arduino Mega Board. And uh, you can use the Ono, but you'll only be able to connect six of the eight sensors. I kind of like connecting all eight of them. Underneath is the sensor, uh, the QTR8RC. And that's the important part, uh, because that is eight pairs of LEDs and infrared sensors. And it actually senses reflectivity so you can detect a line. Oh yeah, and notice that I've got a half inch caster under there. And that seems to give it the necessary clearance. It needs about a centimeter or a little less than a centimeter clearance. Uh, now on the top, I put the eight NeoPixel strip right here, and that lets me know what the sensors are showing. Notice when I put my fingers under the sensors, it's reflecting the infrared I mean the LED back to it and so it's showing me where the line is. So that really helps you calibrate and debug problems by hooking up that on the top. You'll need a motor controller. I'm using this is very inexpensive one and it's good enough for controlling these motors. The L298N I think. And then here is a battery. You can use like double A batteries, like four double A batteries or two nine volt batteries in parallel, but we had a lot of problems doing that. Uh, I really like getting this one 12 volt rechargeable, gives you the same amount of power all the time to where if you're using double A batteries, once they start running down, your motors are going to start misbehaving or something like that. I put a speaker on here. You don't really need that. I was just going to make it play a victory song afterwards. These motors, they're plastic gear motors. You can get them off of eBay real cheap. Uh, and they come with the wheels. They're pretty cheap, but they seem to work uh, for something this size. They work. Uh, I've had one fail maybe off of out of 10 or something like that. Now a push button, I really like that because you don't really want the motors to start turning until you push the button. So when you're ready to start. Um, the board, I just cut this board plywood on a bandsaw. I've seen some kits that come with like an acrylic board and they're okay, but it just seems like they're a little bit more brittle. And so I really like uh, using a real board, but if you don't have that available, then use whatever you can f come up with. Here's a look at the code that I have included on the web page. At the top, we need to include two libraries the QTR sensors and the Adafruit NeoPixel. Then, underneath that, we initialize the Adafruit NeoPixels and we put those on pin 10 and the number of pixels is eight. So you can change that if you put it on a different pin. Underneath that, we show which pins that our QTR sensor array is going to be connected to. I know we're putting them on analog pins zero through seven and they don't correspond on the mega board to pins zero through seven, but those shows the numbers that will work. Then if you are going to use the UNO, then you'll need to comment out that line and then uncomment the one for the UNO code that shows it's on the pins 14 through 19. And that one only has, you can only use six of these sensors. Underneath that, we create a, an array called sensor, and that's going to store the values of what each sensor reads. Underneath that, we create an array called threshold. And these numbers that I've initialized them to 700s, but this is uh, something that you'll need to play around with because this is going to be the threshold value from 
what it detects as being a line. Uh, the sensor, if you don't see anything at all, if there's no reflectance, then uh, I think it reads 4,000. And if it's not, if it's complete reflectance, then it goes all the way down to zero. So those are some numbers that you'll need to mess around with. Then underneath that, we connect our motor controller to the pins. Then I've created some functions for you to use. One is called stop. Just call that function. It will stop the motors. The next one is called forward. And that one takes two parameters. Each one ranges from 0 to 255. And that will be the speed of the left motor and the right motor to move forward. And you can use do the same thing with reverse if you want to. This is another function called sit pixels to sensors. It illuminates the NeoPixel if it, the QTR sensor reads above that threshold value. And in the setup, connect to the pins, the motor controller, that's those two lines, and then we are going to begin the serial to, so that we can write to the serial monitor. Then we need to initialize the NeoPixels, pixels.begin. And then I'm connecting the push button on the mega board to pin 53. So that's a number that you could change if you're using an Uno. Then I set up a while loop that is going to loop as long as the push button hasn't been pressed. And what this loop does is it reads the sensor and then it sets the pixels to the sensor and then it prints to the serial monitor the value of each of those sensors. And then I set the delay at half a second so it just doesn't flood the screen too fast. Finally, after you press the push button, the while loop will exit and then it begins the forward 5050, it begins moving. After setup is finished, then you go to the loop function. This one, again, it reads the sensor, sets the NeoPixels on the top to the threshold values of the sensor. And now here are all these if statements. It looks at each of the at each of the sensors 0 through 7 and then compares those to the threshold values 0 through 7. The, like on the first one if sensor 0 is less than the threshold value of 0 then it's going to change forward it needs to turn left so it sits forward to 10 on the left wheel and then 60 on the right wheel. So all these numbers uh, in the forward function are numbers that you'll need to play around with first step will be to connect the QTR sensor to your Arduino board. This may be one of the most difficult parts is soldering this thing. You may, instead of soldering the wires directly to it, you may want to use the header that comes with it. Just make sure you get it on the correct side so it's not in the way of the IR sensors. Then after you run the code that I've supplied, you can start the serial monitor. You'll be in the while loop and notice the values that are coming from the eight sensors and notice that they're very large numbers. What I do is I hold my finger under each sensor and just to test it, notice it goes to a low number. Now if this, I'm holding it under the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, seventh one, and last one. This lets you see that your QTR sensor is working. Now you can connect the NeoPixels and run your fingers under the sensors to see the LEDs light up. You can find the schematic and parts list on the website. Now you can connect the rest of the parts, the push button, the motor controller, the motors, and the battery. The battery is necessary to power the motor controller so the motors won't run without it. After you connect the motor controller's 5 volt output to the volts in on the Arduino, then it will no longer need to be plugged into the computer to get power. You can hot glue most of the components to the platform. The caster needs to be screwed in. I also screwed in the Arduino because it was coming off when I would plug and unplug the cable. Surprisingly, hot glue has held the motors in place. If you build a really cool one, then please send me a picture.